In this video we're going to be talking about integral exponents. So you should have already looked over the textbook to get an idea of what we're talking about, but I just wanted to give you a few extra examples. So we'll start with this one in green. It's just a simplification problem. Uh, and the main thing that's going on here is we have this exponent on the outside, this 4, and it's supposed to apply to everything on the inside of these parentheses. Okay, so there are no pluses and minuses here, which makes things a lot easier. It's just multiplication. 3 times x squared times y cubed. So what's going to happen is this 4 is going to distribute to everything inside. So we should get 3 to the 4th x squared to the 4th and y cubed to the 4th. So this is how you apply this external set of parentheses. You just distribute that 4 to everything. And then we just have to evaluate each of these individually. So 3 to the 4th, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 it's going to be 81. x squared to the fourth. So rules of exponents say that when you have an exponent raised to another exponent, you multiply those two exponents together to get the new exponent. And similarly, that's what's going to happen with y. So to finish things up, we just have to do this multiplication. So this will be 81. x to the 2 times 4, that'll be x to the eighth. y to the 3 times 4, that'll be y to the twelfth. So here's our final answer. Okay, in the next example I just want to do something that's slightly more complicated and this is a really common mistake um, area. S students who see this problem typically don't handle it in the correct way so I just want to point out what's happening. So here we've got 2 times x to the negative 2 plus y squared and all of that is divided by c, by z. So first I'm going to work it the correct way, and then I'm going to point out the common error in a problem like this. So we want to handle, so simplify, um, at least for us, is going to mean we can't have complex fractions, and we can't have negative exponents. So the only issue with this right now is that there's this negative exponent. So that's the first thing to fix. So 2 times x to the negative 2. Hopefully we already know by now that a negative exponent is the same as a positive exponent just on the opposite side of a fraction bar. So you may not think that this looks like a fraction right now, but really you can always imagine something as a fraction over 1. So if we want to get rid of that negative exponent, really what we're going to do is move that x to the negative 2 and make it a positive 2 in the denominator. Now, here's the issue. This is going to go into its own denominator. It does not go into the denominator with z because this z also is in a denominator for y squared. So if we put that x squared down here with the z, that would mean it had something to do with the y squared, but it doesn't. It has nothing to do with the y squared. So this first term we're going to rewrite, as we just did, up here. 2 over x squared plus y squared. And all of this is going to be divided by z. So here's our first step. But now we've got a complex fraction. So a complex fraction is when you have one fraction contained in another fraction. So we have to get rid of that. And there are a couple of ways to handle this, but my favorite is to split the fraction, if that's easy to do. So we have 2 over x squared divided by z, and then we have y squared divided by z. And this term over here is fine, it's just a regular looking fraction, but this one isn't. So if you have 2 divided by x squared divided by z, that's the same as just putting those two things, um, as multiplying those two things together. So 2 divided by x squared z plus y squared divided by z, and this is a fine answer um, in terms of simplification. You could make these into a common denominator. Um, and if you wanted to do that, you would have to multiply this on the top and bottom by x squared and add them together. So also a fine answer would be um, 2 plus x squared y squared all over x squared z. And this is exactly the same as the answer above. We've just written it together in a single fraction. But for our purposes, this is a perfectly fine answer because simplify for us uh, in this context, because we're just talking about exponents, really just means no negative exponents, and 
you're never allowed to leave complex fractions like this as a final answer. That will, I mean, if, if the instructions say simplify, this will never be what your final answer looks like. So one of these two is, is fine. What is not fine, <clears throat> so let me copy down the problem again. So here, we, what we don't want to do, and I'll change my pen color to something bright to indicate this is um, not what we want to do. So this is not equivalent. Is we don't want to say that this is 2y squared and then just move the x squared into this global denominator. Because as, as I mentioned before, this x, this x to the negative 2 has nothing to do with this y squared term. Okay, It is going to have some interaction with the z because this is all over z. And of course it has some interaction with the 2, but it has no interaction um, with this term. And as soon as you try to put it in this denominator, now you're dividing y squared by x squared, but you're never supposed to be doing that in the first place. Um, okay, so this is not what you want to do. What you want to do is follow these steps that we described here. First, you make its own fraction, and then you simplify the resulting expression until you get something that has no negative exponents and no complex fractions.